Hey, what you reading for? Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel where I talk about books, literary, horror, classics, and contemporary. This video marks the one year anniversary of this channel. How about that? So later in the week, I will make a video where I look back on that year, what I learned and what I experienced. But in this video, a little bit more focused. In this video, I'm going to look back at the month of June. And I want to tell you briefly about the five books that I read in the month of June, why I chose to read them, what my experience w was, and, uh, and my takeaway. After that, after we deal with the bookish stuff, I want to uh, share some personal updates with you. In June, I moved from the south of France to Riga, Latvia. And I want to share with you my first impressions and talk about how that's going. And then I'm going to tell you the story about the move and when my cat Zvezda saved the day. So you're going to want to hear that story. So give this video a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'm going to hand things over to the great American composer John Adams for the intro sequence. And I'll see you on the other side for my exciting June wrap up. <music> I started the month wanting to finish this 10-part video retrospective of horror from the 1980s that I'd been doing, and I wanted to get that finished, so I read uh, The Festering by Guy N. Smith for that video retrospective. And my expectation was for some fun, schlocky 80s horror fun, uh, except that um, I do not know how to have fun, uh, apparently. Uh, I used to, but I have forgotten. Uh, books, uh, books should be serious. Books should be emotionally and psychologically challenging. They should expand the language, expand our imagination, expand our capacities for empathy, and um, give us new perspectives on the world and on others. Right? Uh, but fun? Yeah, books should be fun, really? Of course. Of course, books should be fun, or, or can be fun, except that um, I have forgotten how to have fun. I used to know how to have fun. I have memories of having fun back in the day, you know. But I just don't. I don't know how to do it anymore. I don't know how to do it. Um, so I uh, I read Festering, and I did not have fun with it. I failed. I failed to enjoy it. Next, I read Lapvona by Otessa Moshfe from 2023. Now, I read this book for a, uh, for a book club. I was moving, uh, I was getting ready to move to Latvia. And so I looked online for some book clubs in, in Latvia to see if, what was going on there. And I found this book club and they were reading Lapvona. So I read it. So I figured that would be a good way to, um, to meet people once I arrived in the city. You know, meet bookish people, the best kind of people, right? So they had selected Lavona, and I read it. And uh, a few days after I arrived in Riga, we met up in a park to, to talk about the book. There were 10 of us that met for this book club. We met at a, in a park to talk about Lavona and have a little picnic. And of the 10, uh, th there were three who, three of the people who really liked, liked the book. Although when they... Talk, talked about why they liked it. They weren't really that convincing, to be honest. And three of us really hated the book, and the other four were, eh, oh, meh, it's okay. And I fall into that last category. Eh, it's okay. There's a lamb on the cover, and in the beginning, uh, they they talk about lambs in the beginning of the book, but then after a few pages, no more lambs. So despite... What the, despite the promises that the cover makes, uh, Lavona is light on lamb. Light on lamb. That's my takeaway. I thought that the writing was good, but the storytelling, not so much. I'd be hard pressed to tell you what the story is about, actually. It takes place uh, in a fictional fiefdom in medieval times, uh, but I'm not sure what the, what the point was supposed to be, if there was one. I get a sense that this book is uh, is a bit more 
style over substance, you know, which I am okay with. Uh, as long as, I mean, if you're going to do style over substance, I really need a lot of style. Um, this, in La Vona, the writing was good, but it wasn't anything extraordinary or it wasn't good enough to compensate for the flaws in the story. So I didn't love this book, uh, but I didn't hate it either. Um, it's my first experience with O Tessa Moshve. And I might check her out again. I might read another one of her books if the opportunity comes up. Although, uh, if that opportunity does come up, I, I will be skeptical. But uh, I'm always skeptical. I'm more skeptical than usual. But um, why not give her a second shot? I didn't, I didn't hate this book. Next up, I read this, uh, this thick book here. Uh, Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. This is a book that a lot of people are talking about. A lot of people love this book. It won the Women's Prize for Fiction and it won the Pulitzer, too, in 2023. Or for 2023. Uh, I went into this book blind. I bought this, uh, I ordered it online um, last winter. And I bought it just because it had won, it won the um, Women's Prize for Fiction. So, uh, and usually books that win that prize or that are even nominated for that prize, usually those books do work very well on the, they do a really good job of highlighting uh, exceptional achievements in literature, I think, usually. So I had no idea what this book was about, I just bought it just because it won that prize. Uh, and because of its uh, literary accolades, I was expecting something with uh, bit of literary flair to it. That is not what this book is. It has a very straightforward conversational tone. For example, check out the very first line of this book. First, I got myself born. So that's how the book begins. It's a very conversational, plain narration. It took me a long, it took me a while to get into it actually it took me a long time to get into this book but when i finally did get into it i really enjoyed it i found it ultimately it was a it was quite a rewarding read for me i'm going to make a, a separate video about this book because there's a lot to get into here but i liked it and i gave it four stars it was my first barbara king solver um book uh, but I, I would like to read more from her. She, this was not the first time she won the uh, Women's Prize for Fiction. She won it for the Poisonwood Bible, I want to say. So maybe I'll check that book out too. Although the word Bible in the title has, has me a bit nervous. But, um, but I'll check that out. I, I liked this book. I, I would think I'd like something else from her. Next up, I read Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. Now, I put a lot of pressure on myself uh, reading this book because honestly, my relationship with Stephen King has been kind of hit or miss with his books. More misses than hits, if I'm being honest. And I really want to like this author. This is an author that a lot of people love. People just praise and celebrate his work. So I want to understand and I want to get what other people are getting, right? I'm a human being, not from another planet. I should be able to get it too, you know? I feel like there's a party going on and, and I've been invited, but I just, I can't find the party. Like the directions are all confusing, right? Like I read The Shining and big miss for me, did not enjoy that. Uh, then I read Different Seasons. It's another celebrated collection of his, and that was a big miss for me, too. And I feel like I, I keep getting these text messages like, oh, this party is amazing. You should come check it out. I'm like, I'm trying. Where's the party? Right. So, uh, so I went into Pet Cemetery, really putting pressure on myself to like this book. And I, I feel like one of the reasons why Stephen King doesn't work on me that often is there is a um there's kind of a folksy tone to his writing his stories really center uh, in around small town america and um that's just not nothing against small town america it's just not something that really resonates with me that i found that i find particularly engaging 
and the folksy tone that he uses doesn't doesn't really play that well with me. So going into Pet Cemetery, I figured I'd read it in French, right? I thought that that would diminish the folksiness of it and kind of remove me a little bit from the small town America vibe. So I uh, so I didn't really read Pet Cemetery. I read uh, Cimetière, yeah. And unfortunately, the translator did an excellent job. So I was definitely, I definitely got small town America vibes. I was uh, definitely very folksy. I definitely felt like I was spending time in Maine. Everything in this, in this book felt completely unearned. Uh, the character, uh, for the story, the character needs to go to a different location. So the character has a premonition. Uh, why does she want to go to this location? She can't tell you. She just has this strong feeling. So she goes to this location. And that happens a lot. That happens a lot in this book. Premonitions and unearned feelings. That's what drives what little action there is in this book. And no, no, that's not going to work on me. I need characters to make choices that are based on choices that are earned. You know, not just, we can't use supernatural as some kind of deus ex machina just to move the sto story to where we want it to go. I, no, I wasn't buying it. I tried. I really did try. Um, but I failed. I failed to enjoy this book. Although, I'm not going to take, I'm not going to assume all the blame for this one. Because I really did give it a good try, you know. I've given Stephen King a good try. I've read yeah, a lot of his books, and I've enjoyed some of them, but uh, he's clearly not an author that resonates with me. And I think part of it is is this problem with premonitions. Um, it's not the first time he's used people having feelings, unearned feelings, to drive the narrative. That's not going to work on me. I will consider making a video about my complicated relationship with uh, Stephen King's work, although you have to be very careful when you say something less than flattering about Stephen King on YouTube because his fans are passionate fans. And some of them, not all of them obviously, but there are a few who uh, just, don't, just don't know how to handle when someone's opinion differs from theirs or someone's experience differs from theirs. Um, yeah, so I could get some backlash for that, which, uh, you know, that's fine. If my comedy videos didn't destroy this channel, one video about how I'm not a super huge Stephen King fan, that's not going to destroy the channel, is it? <laughs> Lastly, one of the reading high points of the month of June, I read Cataract City by Craig Davidson. Now, Craig Davidson is a popular Canadian author. He also puts out books, um, horror books, under the name Nick Cutter. Now, I had read three uh, Nick Cutter books, and I liked them all very much. So I was very excited to, um, to check out his Craig Davidson output. And uh, I loved this book. I thought this was excellent. Cataract City won the prestigious Giller Prize, which is like the Man Booker Prize for Canada. And I was very happy that I read this book because this channel here, this is a Bookworm Adventure Girl. This is a channel, a booktube channel I've been following for quite some time. And the creator of this channel, Jolene, uh, she focuses um, on Canadian literature. Not exclusively, but Canadian literature. She doesn't love everything she reads, but when she does love a book and she talks about it, it's, it's contagious. So I'm re hearing about these great Canadian books, great Canadian authors I've never heard of. I'm like, oh, I need to read that book. I need to read that book. And I never do. I'm always saying I watch her channel and I'm thinking, oh, I need to read more Canadian books, and I don't. Except in June, I did. I read Cataract City. Not only a Canadian book, but a Giller Prize winning Canadian book. And it was very good too, so I'm very glad that I, that I, uh, that I read that book. I'm going to leave a link uh, in the description box to um, Bookworm Adventure Girl to her channel, so check that out if you're not a subscriber already. Uh, that's a good booktube channel to follow. Cataract City is a nickname for the city of Niagara, which is um, in Canada, in Ontario, um, where the big waterfall is, and uh, on the U.S. border as well. And uh, cat cataract is the Latin word for cascade, I believe, or for waterfall. So that's how I got the nickname. And the book, Cataract City, is about two young boys who grow in, 
up to be two young men and um, they're having a hard go of things and they make choices that make the hard go of things even harder. Great characters, flawed but likable. Uh, great characters, there's a, there's a villain who uh, brings some tension and some obstacles to overcome, brings a little bit of darkness to the book, which is nice. Um, <clears throat> There is also, there's the city itself, which just kind of acts as a character. And there's an Indian reservation nearby. And there's, uh, there are a few scenes that take place in, in nature. Like there are a few scenes that take place in forest. Uh, one is in the springtime and one is in the winter, which has a very different, different feel to it. And those scenes, they worked very well on me. We begin with a, one of the main characters who is released from prison. And then the rest of the book is mostly flashbacks, but also some current timeline as well. Expertly paced. Uh, very enjoyable read for me. Trigger warnings for dog racing and dog fighting. Now, the dog fighting is not viewed favorably in this book, but it is there. And that's some ugliness that some readers might have problems with. So I'll just, I'll just throw it out there. Trigger warning for that. But a thoroughly enjoyable book. And... I want to read more from Craig Davidson. In fact, I immediately, after finishing this book, I immediately started on one of his short story collections, the much celebrated um, A Feeling of Rust and Bone. So I'll be reading that for the month of July. Also in June, uh, June 12th, I um, left the south of France and moved to uh, Latvia on the Baltic Sea, to the capital city, Riga. And uh, I want to share with you my first impressions. Uh, very, very positive. Um, lovely, lovely city. Uh, aesthetically, it's beautiful. There are lots of parks, lots of green, uh, beautiful parks with gardens and flowers and little canals running through them. Lots of parks out here. The city remind, uh, reminds me a bit of Krakow, Poland, where I used to live, except Riga is a bit more spread out. And there's a lot and a lot greener, actually. Pub public transport is excellent, so I'm having no problems getting around, which is nice. I came here blind, like I really didn't know anything about Latvia. And I did, I did a little bit, like a tiny bit of research in that I read a few blogs from foreigners about their experience living in Latvia. And what came up quite often was that um, these, these people were saying that uh, Latvians are kind, but not exactly friendly. Like, it's difficult to meet people here. It's difficult to make friends. So that's really the only expectation I had coming here. And so far, it's only been a few weeks, but so far that has not at all been my experience. I find uh, the Latvian people and the people living here super friendly, super kind, and very easy to get along with, very easy to meet. It's not, uh, not quite, like... Polish people, because Polish people are super kind and super friendly. Um, Polish people are like the Brazilians of Europe, in, in my experience, right? So, uh, like, super easy to get along with. Um, so I'm getting similar vibes here with Latvians and with the people here in Latvia. I'm not quite to the level of the Polish, but still really nice. The second day I was here, I did a stand-up comedy open mic. And afterwards, one of the comedians took me to a street party because I had arrived in the middle of the summer solstice celebrations. So I met loads of people at this party. Then a week later, I did another stand-up comedy open mic. So I'm having no problems. And there's the book, book club as well. I'm having no problems meeting people here. Everyone is super nice to me, super kind. Uh, and I, I don't know what percentage of Latvians or what percentage of people here speak Latvian, which is the, which is the official language in Latvia. Um, and there are lots of Russian-speaking people here. A lot of people from Russia or Latvians of Russian descent, also Ukrainians and people from Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, or Azerbaijan. A lot of Russian speakers here. I do get the sense that these Russian-speaking people they don't always or they don't often speak Latvian, whereas Latvians speak Russian. So I'm hearing a lot of Russian everywhere I go. And when I try to speak with people, it's, it's in Russian. My Russian is really bad, by the way. Uh, it's really bad. So that is a big project of mine is to try to, you know, learn 
not try, but to learn uh, Russian, to improve it. But so far, people are so uh, kind and patient with me as they try to piece together my broken Russian and they have to repeat everything they say to me like four times. Um, yeah, but people are super patient and, and, and kind with me on that front. So that's a lot of fun. I'm enjoying uh, going around to, into shops and asking hyper-specific questions just to practice my Russian and embarrassing myself, but then being forgiven. Loads of fun. Unfortunately, I did a very bad job uh, finding an apartment here. I only had a few weeks and I was having a difficult time like actually getting bookings from the the landlords or bookings from the owners to, to view the apartments and finding a decent apartment at a decent price and that would allow a tenant with a cat. I was having a difficult time. So uh, a few days before the end of my Airbnb stay, um, I panicked and I just took this apartment that I found uh, where I'm currently at and it's not a nice apartment. It's not nice at all. Fortunately, I did not have to sign a long lease, so we're going to have to stay here for probably two months. And then I'll have to look two or three months and I'll have to look for another place. So I'm not quite settled yet. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but we'll get there. We'll get there. I have to tell you the story about how my cat Zvezda saved the day. So we were flying from Stockholm to Riga, which is like a 90 minute flight more or less get on the plane and uh there is this child screaming and crying like you've never heard anything like this just screaming at the top of his lungs so i get settled into my seat right and she has those in her bag and the kids just cry, crying and screaming and screaming so i turn around and look and the 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 parents are trying to get him to calm down they're giving him juice and giving him treats and cookies and whatever and he's just not having it he's just screaming and crying so a few minutes later uh, oh this is going to be a tough tough flight All right so a few minutes later i uh i take fiesta and she's in her travel bag and i go a few rows back to where the kid is screaming and uh, and a couple and i tap the guy the man presumably the father i tap him on the shoulder and in very bad russian i say Excuse me, uh, maybe I can help, right? Izvinitia, ya mogu pomuts, which maybe means, excuse me, I can help. And the guy, he's like frustrated and overwhelmed and he's just, ah, and he just gets up and he lets me uh, squeeze in there. And then <laughs> I tap the woman on the arm, the woman who's holding this, this demon seed, right? And I tap her on the arm and I say, you know, excuse me, my cat. All right, izvinitia moya kochka. And I take the bag and I and I let and I open it a little bit so Zvezda can stick her head out and I show her to the kid, this screaming demon child, right? And immediately, instantly, the kid stops screaming. Instantly the kid stops crying. All right? And uh and I look, and this we're at the front of the plane, so I look to the at the passengers in the plane and they're all looking at it at us, big smiles on their face, giving me and giving Zvezda the thumbs up. So I put uh, Zvezda back in her bag and we, we go back to our seat and the child did not make a single sound during the whole flight. Can you imagine if Zvezda hadn't been there, what kind of flight that would have been for those hundreds of people or how many people there were there? But no, Zvezda saved the day. So there it is, my month of June. I read five books. I moved to a new country. I'm still getting settled. Have you had any experience with the books or the authors I talked about in this video? Have you had any experience with Latvian people? How was it? I look forward to connecting with you in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'll see you at the next video.